Hello everyone, this is The Astrogeek Comics, where I talk about astronomy and space science through art. If you are interested in sci art and space comics, do check out my social media links from the description below. Before we start with this video on exploring the universe, do click on the red color subscribe button below to never miss out on any exciting spacey stuff from me. Throughout this series on exoplanets, we have talked about so many different worlds that we have discovered through various techniques. As our instruments get better and more sensitive, we are finding more and more planetary worlds out there. It now seems that our planetary system is not so unique. The number of worlds we have discovered crosses the 4300 mark and there are many thousands still waiting to be confirmed. All these worlds lie in our close galactic neighborhood. We have not even explored the whole Milky Way galaxy for these planets. With such a high number of planets, it's obvious to us. Is life unique to the solar system or do we have life somewhere else in the universe too? Can one of these strange unknown worlds be home to an alien life? Let's explore this question. To qualify as a candidate for being a possible home to life, an exoplanet has to have certain characteristics that support life. These conditions are inspired from our experience of life and life as we know. Life that is similar to ours, a carbon-based life depended on water and oxygen. The foremost important thing is that the planet should be in the habitable zone around its star. The habitable zone, also called the Goldilocks zone, is that area around the star where the temperature is right for water to exist in liquid form. Closer to the star would turn the water into steam and farther away would freeze it into ice. In our solar system, the Earth and Mars lie in the Goldilocks zone, while Venus lies closer in the hot region and the gas planets in the cold region. The distance of Goldilocks zone around a star depends on the size of the star. A red dwarf emits less energy and will have the habitable zone closer to it, compared to a supergiant star which releases high energies and would have the habitable zone further out. Most red dwarfs we have discovered have planets closer to them than Mercury is to the Sun. But if being in the habitable zone means liquid water, why does Mars have none of it? That brings us to the second requirement for a planet to fulfill. A planet that wants to harbor life should have a magnetic field strong enough to block the radiation coming from the star that strips away the atmosphere of the planet. Atmosphere does not only provide oxygen, but also maintains a pressure for water to stay liquid and not escape. Mars lost its magnetic field in the past as the core became cold and successively lost its atmosphere and all the water it had. Chemically, our exoplanet should also have important life-supporting substances like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, water and organic compounds in the right amount. But these rules are quite bendable. A planet too far from its star can still have a chance to harbor life. If it's an ocean world with its surface frozen, beneath the layer of ice of water, the water can be warm enough due to internal heat of the planet and some sort of microbial life may flourish. This is the suspected case for some moons of our solar system too, like Europa and Enceladus. Understanding these moons will help us understand these worlds too. Ocean worlds have been discovered in the universe around us, and one of these may just fulfill the criteria. Another point to remember here is that we have been talking about life like our own, a carbon-based life. But what if the alien life follows a chemistry different from ours and does not need oxygen or water, but something else? What if it's based on silicon or sulfur? We know carbon is the best choice because of the huge range of compounds it can form. But silicon does come close. There are scientists working to pinpointing alternative chemicals and reactions that might be found in an alien form of life. Very recently, the news of phosphine on Venus made the headlines as the level of phosphine found in the atmosphere of Venus was something that was higher than expected. While we should not be quick to point at it and shout alien, it gives us a new perspective on how alien life anywhere else in the universe might exist in places we otherwise may call inhospitable at first glance. In the case of Venus, at a height of 50 kilometers in its atmosphere, the temperature is good for water to exist 
and aerial microbes to stay alive. Similar oases might exist in exoplanets too. To add to this, even on Earth, we have found microbes in the most extreme places like acidic lakes, in glaciers, in the hottest geothermal lakes, and even high in the stratosphere. What makes us think? Some other world may not be a host to these extremist survivors. A very unique place to find life would be on a class of exoplanets called the eyeball planets. None have been confirmed to belong to this category, but GLYS 581g is suspected to be one such exoplanet. I have discussed them on my comic numbered 6 on my Instagram too. These exoplanets are tidally logged to their host star, which means one side receives constant heat and light and is very hot while the opposite side is in constant darkness and is very cool. It is suspected that it is possible that on the boundary of these two extreme halves, called the terminator, the temperature will be warm and right for liquid water. Due to circulation of winds from the hot side to the cold side, global weather can be maintained. The hot side will be dry, the cold side will be frozen, but this area in the middle can harbor life, at least in a primitive form. These exoplanets have been called eyeball planets because of their resemblance to the actual eyeball. Eyeball planets can be hot or cold type. The above was more of an example of a hot eyeball planet. In a cold eyeball planet, it will be tidally logged but a bit farther away from the star, such that the whole planet will be frozen except for the part of the face facing directly towards the star and receiving constant heat. In this case, life-supporting conditions will exist on the hot side with liquid water. But if this water ever freezes, it will never naturally melt since more energy is required to melt ice. Eyeball planets would be a very strange place to visit. We have found thousands of exoplanets and an innumerable of them wait to be discovered. How many of these have the possibility to support life? To answer the question of finding life in the universe, astrophysicist Frank Drake developed the Drake Equation. It is an equation that works on the probabilities of certain criteria being fulfilled to estimate the number of planets with life. The formula is simple. n, which is the number of planets with intelligent life we can detect, is equal to the product of seven terms. The first term is R star, which is the rate of star formation. These stars can be of any category. The second term is F of P which is the fraction of these stars with, that can have planets. It depends on the environment of stars. Not every star survives the cruel environment with other stars trying to steal its material during the formation process. Some stars that do form are not able to form planets because of forces of other stars and objects around it. Then the third term is N of E, which is the average number of these planets per star that can support life. This will depend a lot on the conditions I have discussed above. The fourth term is F of L, the fraction of life-supporting planets that will actually develop life. Like Mars, a planet that is in the right place to support life may still fail to do so. Plus, supergiant stars with short lifetimes usually do not live long enough in the same stage before any life could arise. The fifth term in this equation is f of i, which is the fraction of these planets with life, where life is intelligent like ours. Even on Earth, we have millions of species, but only a few of them can be considered intelligent. Intelligence can be measured in various ways, complexity of society, emotional spectrum, problem solving, etc. The sixth term, f of c, is the fraction of planets with intelligent life where this life form can also communicate with each other and outer space. Of all the intelligent species on Earth, only humans have such wide range of communications, languages, and have also achieved space communication. Some life may be too new to develop any appreciable form of communication. The seventh and the last term is L which is the mean length of time intelligent species can communicate. A species that dies too soon, even despite developing communication, may not be able to communicate with the other life. 
Detecting life in the universe outside your planet is a task that requires decades of patience. And the duration of our capability to communicate dictates this. Using educated guesses for the above values, one can get the number of possible exoplanets with intelligent life like ours through the Drake equation. Despite all the probability of finding life and arguments in support for it, there still exists a lack of life around the universe. We haven't been able to find any. This apparent paradox was popularized by Enrico Fermi, who voiced that if life is probable outside Earth, why don't we see aliens visiting us? And why haven't we even detected any till now? This apparent paradox is called the Fermi paradox. Many explanations have been given to answer this. Maybe intelligent life destroys itself. Or maybe they are isolating us since we are not as smart as them. Or perhaps we have just discovered an area too small to resemble the generality of life. Or that we are not using our technology sensitive enough. But the strangest one has to be that perhaps we are the only one in this strange universe. Or that we are a part of a simulation created by an intelligent life who did not create any other alien form of life to give us company. The more I think of it, the more I am excited and scared. But how will we know for sure that a planet has life harboring in it? The activities of a life form like breathing, decomposing, etc. would result in chemical signatures of compounds released in these processes like methane and carbon dioxide. If the life form is advanced and is capable of industrialization, we would see the effects of pollution caused by them through chemical signatures too. These kinds of civilizations will also communicate using radio waves, which is one of the way their presence can be ascertained. This was the concluding video for the series on exoplanets. I hope you had a great time exploring and learning about these worlds of wonder with me. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to The Astro Geek Comics. Click on the bell icon to never miss a video. If you are interested in buying official The Astro Geek Comics merchandise in or outside India, you can find links in the description below. Do comment your thoughts on this video and suggestions for future videos. I am eager to read them. Thank you for supporting this IR project. You are the best. Until next time, stay curious and keep looking up.